Namaste, this is uh, Rishkesh Writings and I'm your Anand here. So today we are in the beautiful journey in Rishikesh again with the new new majestic place. So we are at uh, Yogalaya Ashram which is in Ganga Vatika, phase 2. And we are with uh, Swami Sankar Tilakji. And uh, today we will know about his life journey to become a monk and share the ancient Hindu wisdom and the ancient Sanatan wisdom of India toward the world. Namaste Swami. Namaste Haryom Arandaji. We are at uh, Yogalaya Ashram. How Yogalaya found and how you come to the India? Uh. There are two different movements. Yeah. First is to come to India in the 70s under the umbrella of the Venerable Swami Tilak Paramahansa. When uh, he concluded, uh, I was prepared for come to India because I met him in the beginnings of the 70s. Uh, he sent me a letter the very clear order, come to India soon. For that, uh, I start to be trained by him in Madhya Pradesh, in a very humble and nice place on the bank of the Narmada. And in one moment, uh, he sent me to Swami Krishnananda Saraswati, who was disciple of Swami Shivananda, with one letter, who say, please take care of my son and teach him Vedanta. For that, when I arrived here, I realized the love of Rishikesh, because Rishikesh was a beloved place and attracted you in that time. Because if you was a sadak, you want to stay with other sadaks and the great masters of that time, of, uh, captured your soul and uh, you be involved in knowledge in this silent atmosphere who was this kind of Rishikesh and always this sanskar remained in me and 20 years back I decided to open this ashrama Yuvalaya Ashrama in Munikireti and the good opportunity was to get these places in this complex, Ganga Vatika now, I'm more happy than before because I think Ganga Vatika is one of the more silent, if it's not the most, it's the silent place here in Munikireti, Tapovan, Rishikesh area. Before that it's called as a Monkireti, now it's a Munikireti. Yeah, now it's Monkireti. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Monkireti because <laughs> And now the, the monks, there are no many, there are no many. And now they are not uh, also money place, they are not too much wisdom place. And also it's not uh, also silent place, it's not money place. Now it's, uh, it's uh, the is one place where the knowledge are rooted and integrated in the soil and it's possible to discover this peace if you come in with one spiritual background in you and the capacity to see deep in this uh, now crudel atmosphere but any in any way Rishikesh is a tirta uh, made it by the saints for that this Shakti but is ready for all the sadaks. They are. They want to uh, close their eyes here and be out of many of these temptation. Now they are in Rishikesh. So Rishikesh is a platform, according to you, which create a uh, lots of travel journeys to uh, the sadaka. He was in the in the main port to come to here after your 
want your journey, spiritual journey, invite you and get the benefits and the, and the punya to come here and was the platform to go out of uh, this um, worldly and, and hot world and life if you want to meditate it and you want to create it your own bhumika, your own place to meditate for that. Yeah. This again was a perfect uh, platform for travel into your spiritual planet. But always we are talking from the heritage of Rishikesh. If we want to talk about the actual Rishikesh, maybe we talk about other topics. How do you find yourself, uh, you come from a Catholic country and visit a Sanatan, a universal Dharma country. Mm. So how do you see the, the changes and the transformation? Uh, now I celebrated this year my 50 years in in Dharma, uh, formerly with my Yakni Pavita and everything, with I embrace formerly the the Hinduism. But because I was uh, very I was very young when I changed my religion, for that I was very for very less time a Catholic practitioner. Zero to seven, nothing to to understand. Seven to fourteen was the top of my Christian background. Was very less, very less. But because I was educated in a in a religious private school with a lot of devotion to the Virgin Mary, and this uh, spiritual background was the soil uh, from this point I built my Hindu religiosity I am I am now I am beloved of the Devi I am Devi Pasaka for that I realize in the Vedic Vedic Dharma my Prarabdha Karma from different lives. Yoga Prastha like Sri Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita is this yogi no no conclude his yoga enlightenment from past life and they uh, be meted with the yoga again in the next life. Maybe this is my circumstances, but for me was no doubt, no conflict, no problem to to surrender to this religion. I never have, and really if I find inside of me, I don't have any uh, Christian Christian roots in my mind, no, no vasanas, no desires. I never doubt from that time, 50 years back, any kind of doubt about my faith, my yasta in dharma. We have a Dasa Mahavidya and uh, in, in, in Hinduism or in Sanatan we worship it. Who is your favorite uh, Dasa Mahavidya goddess <laughs> and uh, why this uh, she is favorite for you? Chinnamasta. Chinnamasta. Because um, I remember one one katha of my Guru Dev tell me, who inspired me and and drew the path I I need to follow at that time and, and nowadays too. One man called to one Guru Dev, who was relative fame famous at his time, and his his man was a rich person. He say, Oh Guru Dev, I want to get um, your diksha. And the Guru Dev say, What is your diksha? With your what is your dakshina? Because uh, uh, nothing is free, nothing is free. The question is, what is the price? And he say, uh, I give you this that money. And he would say, why you insult me? This is nothing. For one simple calm of my knowledge, take out this year and go. And he f feel offended. For, and the next year he come back again and say, Rudev, this is my diksha. I, I think now it's a big quantity of gold. And Rudev said, please don't insult me, go out. You don't know what is the value of my teachers. And come back again and say, Rudev, now I get the answer. I study for three years with other saints. And he say, the more valued thing I have is my, la my body. I say, the body? 
I don't want your body, your body come from your parents. It's, give me a, one thing is real from you. Mm. Three years more in the mountains and thinking, because he was completely focalizing to get his diksha. The Guru Dev, I want to give you my life. He said, no, no, the life come from Iswara. For that, you are not the owner of this. Go and searching what is the real value from my teachings. And after he realized the truth, he said, Guru Dev, I want to offer you my ego. Because I'm, I travel from many bodies and many life, but with the same ego, this is really my my property is to say, yes, this is the real dakshina for the real diksha. Tirna Master teach us this. They are like a ravana, many heads, but they are the main head. We have a head for to be a doctor, for to be father, for to be son, for to be many things. Maybe we cut these heads, but they flourish again. But the main head is your ego. If you want to learn, all these vidyas they are linked with the grace of God try to think in in Chinnamasta and you will like have to got your ego and offer to your Guru and uh, here you also teach us about the Vedic education in this uh, ashram and uh, um, how you give a message of light to the universe and a student which is com who's coming to mm. learn this knowledge and what is your first uh, priority for them we have two possibilities to to offer to the person who want learn drops of knowledge from the vedic approach or enter inside of the ocean of the knowledge of veda uh, if the person want to learn something who clarify his life and also apply to his religiosity, different religions, belief or not, or they want to apply to to get a good human life, we teach them the values of the Vedas. No, the values of the Veda. Normally, I teach them these four values of a human being. We learn from our religion, the Chatur Purusharta. They are no problem with the energy of money. Art is good to be responsible of your life, take care of yourself. This is one important value because one human being are not responsible of his life, he is a slave of others. Karma, the life needs enjoyments, for that the mind don't survive without enjoyments, for that to learn how to get the appropriate enjoyments in the life is so, so, so important. These two things created the immanent dharma. The immanent dharma is natural dharma, but like the fly, they want to enjoy, protect his life and working every day. And also he want to get the enjoyment of the pleasures of his life. But the human being do this thing more sophisticated way. In this sophisticated way, uh, we need to learn some cultural learning about how we cultivated our humanity, the difference between the fly. For that we need some learning about the Dharma. And Dharma is the process to sustain it us in the life with ideologies, with values of life, inspiration from the saints and, and, other, and, and other teachings. Obviously we give them the inspiration, the sort of the inspiration they are in our scriptures and and the teachers, etc., etc. They learn, like you drink from one fountain, uh, this water, and after you follow your path. I, 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 in my experience, they, they was inspired from our Hinduism, and Sanatana Dharma, and after they become more good human beings. And another of these four, these four values is to be free, this moksha value, to be free from sufferings. We well, we help them how to manage their emotions uh, for avoid the trespassing of the natural pain of the body, the natural pain given by the nature, the natural pain given by others, don't trespass it to our mind. This is the way when they, this painful life 
go to our mind and we don't know how to manage our life, it starts to become transformed in suffering. We teach these things to all. All the people do want to know some things first from one religion and for all the follow of religion they want to put in practice our religion. And the second main core of our teachings for both of them is, is a famous sentence see, they are in the Mahopanishad who are concluded in Vasudeva Kotombaka. Uh, it's not possible to close the eyes of something happened in the same home of all we live and after uh, we want to to stay well in this platform of existence. Like this Mahopanishad say only the intelligent one, they know very well some, anything happened to others, anything happened in this home, the environment, after you enjoy your suffer, for that we realize we are part of the same home and the same family. This is the way we introduce the ideology of the Vedas for all of they want to get some draft of enlightenment, inspiration, and for all they want to work hardly in his Dharma ideology. Or because always this knowledge needs to be practiced and life. As we see that uh, in in today's world, today's centuries, many people are uh, passing by the stress and anxiety. This is uh, like more common uh, uh, the sector exactly happening after the, the rise of capitalism. And we even we see in India also the families before that there was a big families. Now we have a small small nuclear families coming up. So the the people who's working for a corporation and the things they come uh, like how they manage uh, these things and be, uh, give uh, give themselves a good uh, uh, vibes. Like so, do you have any scripture or any particular dhyana uh, dhyana meditation practices for them? Uh, to share so how they can uh, live a life with longe longevity the, the, the life is necessary to live with intelligence yeah. and this intelligence you start to thinking from the first action who we, we do in the life is to eat and breathe for that if we want to have a healthy, holy, happy life, we need to know how to eat and how to breathe properly. Because there are a psychogastronomy, we need to eat good for our wellness of our mind, we need to learn how to breathe, because breathe is the first food the human being, we take it after water and after solids. For that, these two things, when we manage properly, created the perfect harmony and balance it for to resist the conflicts of, of the life. Because conflicts of the life, they come and, uh, and they, they force us to live in, under his hands. In consumerist society, like we, we, now we live, uh, how we do for change this society, not possible. For that we are responsible of the reactions against these things. For that the first thing we need to do for the revolution of our consciousness and not to be a slave. And also the slave who want to be a slave, because this is another thing. We are partnerships of, of, of all these asuras and demons who want to make us completely uh, zero. Is when we take control of our health, body and mind, equilibrium from the from the foot and from the breath. These two things they are not only part of the culture we grow. It's a question of the human culture with it for the intelligence one. For the set is to do exercise because without you be responsible of your body, the body captured you in the more thematic and negative way. Because always this suffering comes from the body, it is not possible to avoid in the painful of the body. But if you are if you are old with 21 years age, 
because your body is completely destroyed as impure and full of miseries what happens when you get 70 or so 80 and the mind starts to be defeated by the body who captured and sent to the dead for that is necessary to understand now the need to eat, to breathe and to do exercise properly and organize the time not dedicated all efficient efficient energy time to work and to get money for survive because the affective the emotional time they no remain in us after we give all this uh, effective time to work for that is necessary in this study of the life preserve some categories for our inner self first for ourselves and second for the deep lord who live in us like us this is religious practices to give food to nourish our soul and the fifth quest the fifth tool is to use philosophy like a therapy to be better because philosophy when it's big jnana, we apply in our life when it's only jnana, maybe it's a thing we learn and we store it here but we don't use like we started the books and we put the, the money in the bank or put the money in the pocket of others when we need what happened for that we need to lift according to the philosophy and all these things they're concluding one practice is the meditation meditation give us the peace in our uh, stress and tensions is try to imagine you are always under one uh, pressure this tension don't give you the possibility to get peace and peace is the middle po is the bridge for enlightenment for that the same meditation you get from enlightenment is for reduce the tension and the tension is the tension in your ego and with this ego not possible to get enlightenment for that is necessary to disassemble the ego for all the things who created tension for the, for him through meditation meditation is the power of to get relaxed without a sleep because when you sleep is a natural process but also with the pension they are for those tension they don't want to live they want to sleep they don't know they don't want In, inside of them they don't want to sleep because they know they don't recover never they want to they are addicted to tension like addicted to the drugs they don't want to be free from the drugs the person they are addicted to the to the activities for that meditation with meditative life mean be conscious in your food in your breath in your exercise in your spirituality practice every day for that organize your life and learn like a philosopher for enjoy the truth and survive in front of the middle of the problem mean mental stability and practice meditation like you work like you sleep and you eat it's part of your need it's a human heritage like in sanatan dharma every saint and the sages they have a uh, particular akhada or particular uh, sect so which sect you came came from and uh, which says uh, diksha is more important so without diksha uh, you cannot evolve your uh, the pa uh, your own own self inquiry power so which sampradaya you came from uh, i don't want to define that sect yeah. sect because this is a um, very polluted word in nowadays and sect come from this uh, concept of sector and sector is also like the when you have a line you segmented the line in hypothetical areas but the line is never segmented but that we have a one belief this belief is the belief in the in the in god second in which concept of god you believe I don't have my own idea about God because I don't trust too much in my mind. I don't want to create it my God according to my mind. For that, 
I was uh, through the studies, I developed a faith in the true knowledge shared in the Shastras of the Vedas. For that, I trust, I follow the idea of God in Ishwara concept, who is mean Dharma. And this Ishwara who regulated the existence and also my, my life is a do in a logic process, not a logical process. Maybe I don't know what is the deep meaning of this Dharma, but the Dharma I know is a logical take care of me, take care of you, make one alliance of take care of themselves. For that, this uh, Isha I learned in the, the scriptures gave me the opportunity to to join with God outside through the harmony and inviting me to go inside to find a God through my real self. This is philosophical concept of Shivoham, in example. For that, I read all these Veda teachings, because I am Vediki, from the Smarta Sampradaya. I am Orthodox who follow and the Upanishads, Brahma Sutra and Bhagavad Gita mostly with a complementary text like all the Tantras and Agamas, Nigamas, etc. or, uh, or Yoga Vidyas, etc. But the main core, the final column is this. According to the teachings of Adi Shankaracharya. For that I'm Advaiti, I follow Vedanta and use the tools of Tantra and yoga, who is part of the Tantra, from the Tantric point of view, from Abhinavagupta Acharya of the Trika Tantra. In this way, I embrace the Dharma, and all the persons who follow the Sanatana Dharma, I mean the Vedas, when different co beliefs different from me, they are, they are my brothers, and if, when we are sitting, if we are intelligent, we don't discuss, maybe we share, we, maybe we learn, from its others, but we have, we enjoy the same atmosphere and other person from other religion, because we are tolerant and we understand the other beliefs, etc. Also, we are happy with the other religious persons who they are not intolerant and they are not aggressive and they don't use the name of God for impose others his faith or make a slave others in the name of the religion. For that, my Sampradaya is mostly is Sanatana Dharma from Smarta Sampradaya, but my path I follow with this goal of Advaita is uh, the Tantra of Abhinavagupta teachings, of the Trika Tantra. What is your favorite Ved and the one favorite line from that Veda? <laughs> uh, obviously, the obviously the Rig Veda give us a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge, no? But uh, I like one uh, one sloka from the Sutta Upanishad, who is in the Yajur Veda, is uh, to say, and the body is uh, like this wood stick and the breath is another stick both sticks are the aranis when we m m melted this salted this we shake this in meditate they created a fire of knowledge like the body and the mind who connected with the through the breath revealed the truth and uh, you say you mentioned that uh, you uh also learn the Tantra, Abhinava Gupta, Gupta. In, when we see in, in the West, like they, they relate Tantra with the dance and they relate Tantra with uh, the body massage and this is. So, what would you like to say to them? This is not, how do you uh, send them a light that this is not Tantra, this, uh, the actual Tantra is to learning, se learning a self, self. Well, if in this plate this is an apple, yeah, maybe green, maybe red, maybe from from 
Himachal Pradesh, maybe from Japan, this is an apple. In other place, this is a wax with the form of apple. Why we call wax apple? Apple this is a simple free name. It's a wax, always is a wax. Different apples, they are apple, always. For that Tantra is Tantra, and another thing is, I don't know who is. For that, these things that name it Tantra, in nowadays, in, not only in West. In India too. This is a free retweet name. For that, I don't know what is this. Maybe it's Tuntra, or Tentra, or Tuntra, but not exactly Tantra. So how the seeker, a uh, student, to know about the Tantra? Through Guru and scriptures. Anything we do in the Dharma, and Tantra is part of the Dharma, is uh, learning through the Shastras. And the Shastras invite you to learn and, pra and purificate your knowledge and misunderstanding and perfectionate your sadhana through the Guru. So that Shastras and Guru. If the Guru don't follow the Shastras, not only in the Tantra in anything, is you follow one person whose own ideas. For the, the person like me, who are not very clever and we don't trust easily in anyone, we, perf we, we desire to learn the Shastras and pay homage to our teachers who teach us the knowledge of the Shastras, the scriptures. And what is your favorite Upanishad? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. When I was sannyasi and I come uh, after a few years at the feet of my Vedanta teacher, Vasami Krishnananda, I come with some Brahmachari small. It was my homage to him and we start to study with him. And Swami Krishnananda one day in front of me, he say. You need to learn from the Mandukya Upanishad. Make the Mandukya Upanishad your favorite guide in this life. When I meet uh, with Bharati the first time, he asked me the same question, what is your favorite Upanishad say? Mandukya Upanishad. Uh, Mandukya Upanishad, I, I have, I wrote one commentary of the, uh, this Manduka Upanishad, one study about the Duriya Avasta, who is not in English, but we hope recently, because it was a thesis of, to offer to Swami Krishnananda the knowledge I received from him. But uh, I have another love more. I, for me, it's difficult to be monogamic with Upanishad. It's the Isha Upanishad. Is Upanishad make me a religious person, religious person. I really, when the, I open my eyes and see the, this beauty of, and glory of this world, I realize how Ishwara is the Ishana, is not only the ruler of this existence, is the intimate Lord of any expression of the life. And what is your thought about yoga and yoga, Ved and Vedanta? Yoga and yoga? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, obviously, yoga mm -hmm. is Shiva. Mm -hmm. and, and yoga is Shiva because it's the link between Jagat and Jiva, the universe and the living being. And yoga is the process of to be linked with all the living beings in the universe through the nature of Shiva. And uh, uh, you say yoga in Hindi, yoga, yoga in Sanskrit, but uh, I prefer to say, like in many countries they pronounce, like they say asana and not asana. Yeah. 
they say yoga and not yoga. Uh, yoga is not this process for to avoid to be fatty and try to be fit. Yoga is the process of to be linked with the divinity and it's the mystic mystic vehicle to to go inside of and find the antaryami who the inner dweller. Yoga is the real expression of our religion because the rishis was yogis. And yoga is the intimate devotion. And um, you say Veda? Uh, Ved or Veda? Vedanta. Ah, okay. Uh, Veda is, uh, is, uh, is, is the name of, our, of the, the, the basic source of our religion. And is the thing we need to know. We say called the bit. If it's necessary to to learn this, it's not an option. Maybe we don't have the uh, the cara, the capacity to 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 get this knowledge in nowadays. Uh, maybe you need we need several life, but but always is in front of us this need, because the Veda the Veda is always with us because it's um, the divinity Ishvara is always with us. Yeah. And with, through the Veda, we learn what is Dharma. And with our duty, how to manage the Karma, uh, how we be rooted in the, in the divinity, in the, in the divine nature, in the divine expression of, of God who is in the daily life. We love this life if we love Shiva. If we are the envy of Shiva, mm-hmm. obviously um, this, we don't love our, this life. We live, we enjoy the life we want to live always in complaints and sorrows. And Vedanta is the conclusion of the knowledge of the Veda. Veda teaches us in, in 75 persons how to be a spiritual, how to get punya, how to get blessings. In 25 persons, how to realize the divinities of real self. No? For that uh, Vedanta is this conclusion of the Veda process conclusion of this process to get the knowledge how to be a real human being for to be uh, uh, dissolved in the love of the divinity with complete surrendering. And being a monk in Rishikesh, how do you see the Rishikesh? Uh, what is your favorite spot to sit for meditation? Be a monk in Rishikesh, and what is my favorite spot in meditation place? No? Uh, Yogalaya Ashrama, Tilak Mandir, Gangavatika. Because if you say Rishikesh, yeah. I don't, the <laughs> t- temples are very noisy. Yeah, recently, like one <laughs> Swamiji, I was sitting in Ramjula, and he says, uh, Can we wrote to a district magistrate that uh, the people should. Uh, uh, take a one place for the saint and sages or the meditation people so they can at least do the meditation because uh, the tourist comes with their big speakers and all but then they sitting in the meditation so they can't able to practice it before that the people uh, used to sit on the Ganga sand and uh, hear the voice of majestic voice of the Ganga now the majestic uh, voices of rafting tourist uh, here what is your thought about it and uh, how <laughs> you would like to say to the government of India, like, any solution about it? Okay. Maybe you, do you want, after give my suggestion to the government of India, they want to banner me from India? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you know, there are a principle in physics, we learn when we were style, the, princip- the, the principle of Archimedes. When you put something in the water, yeah. And according to the heavy, the heaviness of this, yeah. the water was this out. In the way the tourists come to Rishikesh, the monk go out. Yeah. If you want to go to the forest to see the lions, and you take a thousand of tourists, the lions they want to immigrate to another place. When Rishikesh was, uh, when the Rishikesh, the Rishikesh we're talking was Munikireti, yeah. not the town and not Lakshmanjula area. Munikireti, the people, the, the building they don't want to come because it was very boring place for them. No shops, no restaurants, nothing, no hotels. 
but good for sadakas. Full of ashramas, full of mo. We stay in Mona and for we was we want to be monis for to be monis. When the, the pilgrims disappear, they are, dis are transformed like the one dog be transformed in dolphin. Mm. I don't know how, but this is happened. This is <laughs> when the pilgrim was transformed in tourist. Immediately, uh, they they change the ecosystem of this religious place and become a, a rafting adventure, you know, place. Ad adventure place. No more deva bumi, yeah. more uh, adventure bumi. For that, uh, I want to compare. I want to say to the to the Indian authorities. They want to watch me, want to see the eyes of them. The, the heart of India, according to the ancient scriptures, also in the Mahabharata, also in our Ramayana, we love Sri Rama, and we want to reestablish the Ram Rajya, was in the scripture mentioned Uttarakhand. And we have the more condensed number of Tirthas and sacred places of India, they are located here. And this uh, Uttarkhand is the, really the heart of this India. And uh, in the, there are some religions, Christian religions, Catholics, and the, also the Orthodox. They preserve his religious place. Okay, they give opportunity to the pilgrims, not tourists, because preference the tourists want to enjoy things but the pilgrims, they want to enjoy with the spiritual atmosphere. But the, but the pilgrims they also, they are limited. They are not possible to allow to enter all kind of number of uh, pilgrims because they destroy the peace of the religious people they want to see. And when the tourists come, or the pilgrims they was transformed in tourists, the monks start to be like an animal in the zoo. We want to see monks. But the monks, they don't want to be watching by anyone. The monks, they want to pray, they want to meditate. They are ready to share the knowledge with others in satsanga, not in show, not in a spectacle. If we don't preserve this place. In example, Rishikesh, Munikireti, Munikireti. Okay, no Tapavan, no Rishikesh town. Munikireti, for the spiritual seekers. We want, if we don't do that, immediately the heart attack happened to India. And we don't recognize the spirituality of India. Because from this heart, give this spiritual blood to all the important places of India. Maybe if now Rishikesh are not possible to rescue, maybe it's necessary to create another place. But, like an example, there are one mountains area in Greek, in Greek, in Greece, called Athos. Athos. They are live only monk. They are not allowed to. Uh, leave any kind of monk or any kind of people that are no monk. If the people they want to enter, they will need to permission to the monastery to stay there. This is the strength of this religion. But there are other places in 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 Europe, in in America. They are preserved. What happened with our Rishikesh and Munikireti? The people want to drink, they, are, they drink, okay, no problem. The people they want to eat meat, no problem. The, what, the people they want to do rafting, no problem. But in his areas, and not polluted all place. In my Rishikesh in the 70s, was a nice place when we got to the Ghat and we meet the saint. They were seated in the Ghat in meditation. The people join to them, they start to do questions. We enjoy spontaneous pravachans there. And 
now competition of aratis. What's which aratis sound more highest than another? The drunkards, festivals, people who come in and go. It's nice, but not in all the places. I trust in the I trust in the authorities if they have consciousness for that I pray to God to be so karman to give some light to the authorities because they are the protectors, they are the Rakshamans to protect all of us who want to live and to learn. And this is the reason the many persons from abroad come here for to find this nectar. Now we feel lost in our Rishikas. And uh, you also have a gist to take a bike ride journey. So tell me about this, how this bike ride journey started. <laughs> and what is the story behind this? Oh. Um, I'm a biker monk. I'm a biker monk because, like, I'm, I'm a human monk. I'm. Uh, I uh, at twenty, twenty. I born in the twenties, in the middle of the twenties, in the twentieth century. But I'm projecting the twenty-one century. I'm, I think my mentality is twenty-one century. I I follow the teachings of Swami Shivananda who say adapt, adjust and accommodate. And also I have some uh, personal taste like a an example ride motorcycle. If I have motorcycle, I enjoy. If I don't have motorcycle, I preserve and put my enjoyment in the box and I open when I have motorcycle. I love motorcycle because from the, my childhood time I travel with my father in motorcycle in Badia Prades, who was a very difficult area. I enjoy the Royal Enfield, original Royal Enfield, the ballet from the British, in with a motorcycle and with my guru in the back. If uh, any time I have the possibility to get relaxed on my activities, I take the motorcycle and go. My favorite road here in Lysikes is on the way to Narendra Naga, uh, to Utakashi. I go there and there are no more secret than enjoy, but when I go with uh, friends or, and they are yogis, be sure, always, we meditated and we talking, we do, and the day we take a chai, we talk about many spiritual topics because this is, we are, we, we are made from Dharma. And uh, what's the importance of Ganga for you in life? Uh, when uh, I see all the rivers, I see rivers. When I see Ganga, or I see Narmada, and I learn the secret of Ganga from Narmada, because Narmada was my first sacred river I see in my life. For that, uh, Ganga for me represents the source of life, the source of my spirituality, the the fountain of the Shaktipat because I see how many of my uh, gurus and friends they was the they, they, they was offered to the Ganga in his Jala Samadhi. How many of the Vibhutis after they was cremated they was offered to the Ganga. My father I was offered to the Ganga his ashes, my mother who passed away in the COVID time, his, her ashes was offered the Ganga. Two of my Brahmacharinis 
very early they pass away one here they are offering the Ganga for that Ganga is uh, is for me more than, than a symbol this is the reason I suffer when this Ganga is offended not only with the garbage is offended with the people if they want to enjoy rafting but they don't protect the Ganga and his and her sanctity and also they offended all of us we want to swimming in the Ganga not like in a swimming pool when we want to find in the Ganga water the purifications of our sins Thank you for sharing your light here in Rishikesh and uh, we uh, request the seekers who would uh, who want to learn about the Vedic education and who would like to know a little bit about the light of uh, Indian spirituality, they can visit the Yogale Ashram met the Swami Tilakji. Thank you for this possibility to serve all of you as anchor. Somebody thank you to Mr. Anand and I ask please for forgive and forget because for four years we re do request this interview but but nowadays like at the Tata now is now we enjoy Namaste <laughs>